Now that we've reviewed the basics of MATLAB, let's do an example to put the pieces together. The purpose of this exercise is to explore various ways we can plot data. This function is called the probability density function, otherwise known as the bell curve. We can see that the PDF is a function of a variable called z. Let's plot it in MATLAB. Here we are in the skeleton script I've provided in the description. We have some housekeeping commands up in line 5. I like this because it makes me start with a clean slate. The clear statement deletes all existing variables. The CLC statement deletes the command window. The close all statement closes all currently open figures. Part A of the problem wants us to use colon notation to construct the z vector. It says that z ranges from negative 6 to 6 in steps of 3. The syntax is pretty simple. I created four variables. Z start specifies the starting point, DZ specifies the step size, and ZN specifies the ending point of our vector. Finally, I construct the Z vector via the colon notation. Note that I didn't hardcode any numeric values into line 11. We do this because sometimes the values of Z start, DZ, and or Z end may change. In fact, the DZ variable will change later on. If we hardcoded, we would have to change this every time something changed. But assigning the parts of the vector to individual variables allows us only to make a change when necessary. For example, if z start changes, I only need to change line 8. If I hardcoded z start, I would have to change it every time the variable z start appears in the code. This isn't really a big deal for this example, but it will become very problematic later on in the course. It's always good to start building good habits early on. Let's take a closer look at the z variable. We start at negative 6, increment by 3, and end at 6. We can double click on this variable in the workspace. Lo and behold, z will have all the correct numbers. I like to frequently double click on variables in the workspace to bring up this screen to ensure the variables have the correct values whenever I code. This particular screen is really useful because it allows you to see the individual elements of a vector. If it's something short like this, it can help you debug really quickly. You could optionally unsuppress parts of your code by removing any semicolons so it prints straight to your command window for quick debugging. I typically don't like printing anything to the command window when I need to publish or share my codes because I like to keep the command window clean. But when I'm coding by myself, I'll unsuppress a lot of things just to debug. Okay, now let's do part B. We have the z vector, so we can make the p vector. Before we run the code, let's take a look at this line. One quirk of MATLAB is that you can have different uses depending on the syntax. If you do something like 1e negative 3, MATLAB will interpret that as 1 times 10 to the negative 3. When we're using e in the context of the probability density function, there's a special built-in function for that because MATLAB already assigned the letter e to exponentiation. That's why we have to use the built-in exp function. I'll leave a link to the exp documentation in the video description, although it's a pretty self-explanatory function. Now let's run the code. We got an error. It says we have incorrect dimensions for raising a matrix to a power. This happens because we told MATLAB to perform what is essentially matrix multiplication. This statement is saying multiply z by itself. Recall the rules of linear algebra. To multiply matrices, the inner dimensions must match. But z is a 1 by 5 vector, so if we attempt to do z times z, the inner dimensions will conflict. What we really want is element-wise exponentiation. Notice how we added the dot in front of the caret. Adding the dot signifies element-wise exponentiation. Just from playing around in the command window, we can see that the dot caret squared each element in the z vector. This vector is the same length as the z vector, 1 by 5, which should make sense. Now you might be thinking, wait a minute, 
shouldn't this be a dot divide since this quantity returns a vector? We could, but this expression returns a scalar, so we're dividing a vector by a scalar, which is legal. You can add it to be safe, but it won't change the output. Although the p expression isn't terribly difficult, you should always double check just to make sure you haven't misplaced your parentheses or something. I've personally gotten very tripped up on seemingly simple equations because the simplicity lulled me into a false sense of security, and I rushed. One cool feature is if I hover over the parentheses, MATLAB will highlight the corresponding parentheses. This is a really good way of checking if I forgot to close a set of parentheses or brackets. Also notice the use of the built-in constant pi. We didn't hardcode things like 3.14. Although it may seem inconsequential here, truncating digits may cascade errors throughout a longer problem. Now let's move on to part C. For part C, we need to plot. We're also going to use the UI set color command. From the documentation, we can see that the function opens a GUI with some colors. Whenever we click on the color, the GUI closes and it returns a three element vector. If you recall, you can make any color by combining certain amounts of red, green, and blue. Each element of the vector represents the amount of red, green, and blue for the specific color that we chose. Let's experiment with this in MATLAB. Here we store the three element vector we get from the UI set color in the variable C. Notice how the plot appears in the color we chose. You can make some very aesthetically pleasing plots with this function, so make good use of it. Our plot contains labels on both axes and a descriptive title. We should include units, but this is a relatively simple function, so we can exclude them in this specific case. There is a pretty jarring issue. Our plot looks extremely jagged. It bears little resemblance to the bell curves you might find on Google Images. The reason why is because we made the z vector with a very large step size, so the resulting plot will be coarse. The z vector only has five elements right now. If we add more points, we'll get a smoother curve. This can be done by decreasing the step size. Let's try using a step size of 1. The plot is less jagged than before, but there's room for improvement. This is where you have to develop your own coding style and habits. Not everyone will use the same step size. You could use a step size of, say, 10 to the negative 6, but that's definitely overkill. Let's try a step size of 0.01. Now the plot looks nice and smooth. Notice that the size of our z vector is significantly bigger than before. This should make sense because we decrease the step size, so it takes more points to traverse from z start all the way to z end. As you can tell, there are many values of dz which will make a smooth looking plot. But there are also many values of dz which will make a jagged plot. There is no single correct value for dz, per se. If you use a step size of 0.01, but your friend uses a step size of 0.0001, your plots would look identical. Don't worry about choosing an optimal step size or anything. Use your judgment and experiment with various vector sizes until you get an acceptable plot. Keep this in mind as we go throughout the class. See you next time.